Hello everybody. I wanted to do kind of a quick, uh, I'll call it opinion piece as it were. Um, not normally a type of video I, I really expect that I would do a lot, um, but it was an interesting conversation that, that came up uh, when we were doing um, some long sword practice uh, and talking about tournaments uh, within my HEMA group. Um, and the, the conversation led towards uh, a discussion of different uh, recreation groups, whether it's experimental archaeology or uh, you know, reenactment groups, um, and really how close they get to a real understanding of martial combat and warfare. Um, and so I wanted to just kind of uh, talk through my thoughts on that and, and really express what my opinions are about where different groups actually land in terms of how uh, accurate they, they are in terms of recreating um, the, the actual intent of martial combat and warfare in the Middle Ages uh, and whether or not it's at all historically accurate. Um, and so you can kind of think of it like a scale. Uh, at one end, the very low end, uh, is, is something akin to LARPing. Um, really, no, no effort given to be historically accurate because it's just fantasy. Uh, really, no effort given to be in any type of martial combat situation uh, because there isn't necessarily a focus on actual skill. Um, and at the high end of the scale, you would actually have a, a legitimate, uh, historically accurate uh, personage, someone who, who actually lived the time and, and knew how to fight, and we're really talking about something we can't attain in the modern age because it's simply a person from uh, you know, the, the Middle Ages. Um, and so we have a lot of different kind of very famous recreation groups, uh, clubs and whatnot that are out there uh, that do different type of recreation activities. And not all things are equal and not all, all things are trying to be equal. Um, but they, they kind of land at different points on that scale. And, and in my opinion, some are, are a lot closer to the historically accurate side, uh, but there are plenty that aren't. Um, and I, I think, you know, some things may not surprise people in terms of an opinion piece of someone coming from a HEMA perspective, uh, but I think there are some things that may surprise you about my opinions on this. And I'll get into what I believe is the one key defining factor at the end of this video uh, as to why I feel that really no group is actually truly sufficient. Um, so you look at a group like uh, the SCA in the United States, and I, I'm not sure what their uh, kind of global affiliations are, but I'm pretty sure they're mostly United States. And that's the Society for Creative Anachronism. And they're really focused on that kind of medieval life recreation. And in some regards, um, from a recreation standpoint, uh, ignoring the martial and, and combat side of it for a moment, uh, they do a lot of really interesting things. You know, they, they, they go and they uh, replicate manuscripts, and they go and they weave tapestries, and they do things that are uh, in, in very much a, um, a skill set standpoint, they're recreating those things. And they have their events where they go and they you know, throw up some pavilions and they camp at a campground and they do recreation events, they do education, uh, and all those things. And, and there's some really, really uh, worthwhile endeavors in the things that the FCA does. Um, but when it comes to martial combat and when it comes to just general warfare, uh, they get a lot of things wrong. Um, their combat is, uh, I would dare say it's very sloppy. Uh, they have their own rule set that is not reflective of anything that would be uh, actually documented or based on anything historical. Uh, and they, and they, um, they don't use swords, not really. They, I mean, they really mostly use rattan, uh, and, and they, they kind of try to bludgeon each other. And they use you know, the kind of almost LARP-like system where you, know, you hit the leg and the person has to go down the knee. Um, and it works for what they're trying to do, and, and I think one of the benefits the SCA has is that they're able to build large groups of people because they appeal to a broad interest range, and a lot of people are willing to come in, and they aren't really turned away for one reason or another, and you can get a large population of people out there dressed up in armor, and you can begin to kind of have some of the large battle recreations. But I believe that the SCA, uh, because they kind of have a mixed bag of actually historical, historical, historically accurate uh, combat, um, they really end up sitting kind of on the lower scale. They're, they're not really being accurate. Uh, and I've met you know, plenty of people in the SCA, and 
you kind of get mixed opinions there just with people who are actually part of that organization. Some believe that their combat is accurate, uh, which I think is fooling themselves, and there are plenty who say, oh no, we recognize this is not accurate, it's just a good time, it's a lot of good fun. Um, similar uh, to the SCA, but I believe a little bit further up the in terms of uh, trying to kind of recreate uh, martial combat and uh, and warfare scenarios is something more like Battle of Nations, the, the group that, it's actually a sporting event, but it, it's a group of people who get dressed up in the full armor and they go out there and they just beat each other silly. And they're using steel and they're using actual weapons, not sharpened, but they're, they're trying to take each other down as hard as possible. Um, and as a sport, it, it makes sense within the confines of what they're doing, but the historically inaccurate part is really all they're trying to do is knock the person down. Um, and, and that doesn't reinforce good martial principles or concepts. Now, it would make sense in a big warfare scenario, bunches of people clashing in a melee, knocking each other over. It makes sense there, but what they really do is more like a skirmish. It's like four versus four, five versus five. Um, and I can't really speak from personal experience here because I'm not part of Battle of Nations, uh, but I have, I've watched what they've done, and when it gets down to that one versus one, uh, they're really just going to charge in, they're going to try to bash each other with a shield, but as soon as that person hits the ground, they're done. And it doesn't, again, it doesn't reinforce a concept of, of martial heritage, it reinforces the concept of being a linebacker for, like, American football. Um, and so I, I, I think they're a little bit further up because they, they do focus on trying to get some historically accurate period armor and making sure that, that all that stuff is aligned. Um, so they're a little bit further up on that scale. Uh, but again, martial heritage, uh, they may not have it if they're strictly Battle of Nations. Now, I, I've met some Battle of Nations people who uh, actually also actively participate in HEMA. And uh, they utilize some of HEMA, but they, again, just like the SCA recognizes, well, our combat may not be entirely accurate, uh, Battle of Nations will, will say, our combat is not entirely accurate. It's a sport. We want to get dressed up in armor and have some fun and knock some heads and be done with it. So you go a little bit further up the line uh, and you'll get to uh, HEMA, um, which I'm actively participating in. Uh, I want to understand the, the martial heritage and, uh, of, of my kind of own personal background, uh, but also I want to be active in trying to recreate and doing that kind of experimental archaeology of, of trying to understand how people actually functioned in terms of uh, combat back in the day. And a lot of HEMA, and so here, here's where HEMA begins to get it wrong, a lot of it ends up being one versus one. There's a lot of, I'm fighting you, and it's just one person against another. And while it may happen that, they, that we try things within HEMA to uh, kind of branch out and do slightly bigger things, there's not so much a focus on recreation at that point. We're not always wearing period armor. We do a lot more things versus in, in tournaments, one versus one. And it's not a bad thing because it helps to make uh, the participants focus on actually following good martial practices based on the historical sources, uh, at least once people get very good at it. And actually that's why this conversation came up in talking about tournaments, um, because when I am sparring against a partner who is not either as experienced as I am or they're not staying focused on, on using the proper techniques, they're just going to be flailing around with that sword. And they might get an occasional lucky hit in on me if I'm being the superior opponent or on any superior opponent. They might get that lucky hit in. But the vast majority of the time, uh, a skilled uh, person will be able to easily uh, address wild swings and take the person out in, in using a proper technique uh, as far as you know HEMA tournament rules are concerned. Um, and so what you end up with in HEMA is less on the recreation but good martial heritage uh, and, and good, uh, in my opinion, good proper thought processes in terms of trying to understand how it was actually done. So in the recreation aspect it's very singular, it's very uh, individual and it's very much tied to personal skill. Now I I learned of another group uh, just a couple weekends ago uh, called EMP and it's the Empire for Medieval something. 
Um, they're they're kind of a new group, and they they actually blend all three of SCA, Battle of Nations, and HEMA, and they they try to do recreations using all the principles, getting kind of big groups of people, getting in full armor and bashing each other, but also trying to use proper martial heritage. I think that's a, a, an interesting endeavor, but it's it's apparently been a very big challenge from the guy I was talking to uh, in, um, in his group because it's hard to get members. Uh, not the general public might be interested in SCA where it's a, it's a little bit easier and you're, there's less fear of getting injured, um, but when they start getting into expensive armor and they start beating each other silly and they're using you know actual martial arts uh, the, the you know European martial arts techniques on each other uh, it, it becomes this issue where uh, there's just not a huge participation at least not yet and it's certainly not stateside and I'm really only speaking of, of from my own experience being in the United States now there is another another group that again a little bit further up the line from HEMA in terms of getting more towards historical accuracy in terms of recreation, and that would be the recreationists who are actually in Europe. And you'll see, I mean, hundreds of them, you'll see these big battles of people who, who are actually able to somewhat recreate scenarios in large medieval battles. Um, but everybody in that recreation group is not necessarily using martial principles. And again, a lot of the martial principles that we practice in HEMA is one versus one. So you get to a warfare scenario, it's less so. And I don't think that's inaccurate. Uh, you know, we have, there's plenty of evidence to say that in battlefield scenarios, you're going to have the, the trained people, but you're going to have plenty of untrained people. You're going to have the militia, and you're going to have uh, mercenary groups that, that are um, sometimes lucky, sometimes skilled, but they're not uh, kind of formally trained, and certainly not from, like, birth, like a lot of noblemen might have been. Um... And so you kind of have this large swath of the recreation groups that all kind of hit different areas and the participation waivers based on region and based on uh, what they are actually trying to achieve. But here's where I think the failure of all these groups come in and in terms of a kind of a more pure recreation aspect. I'm going to speak a little bit to HEMA here because, again, the conversation I was having as part of my group leads me to, to this point of the conversation, and that is... The one key thing that none of these groups get correct is that there isn't a concern for personal safety. And what I mean there is when I'm participating in HEMA and I'm about to, to spar against someone, whether or not I'm using a blunt longsword or a fader or I'm using a synthetic sword, I'm wearing a face mask, I'm wearing a padded jacket, I'm wearing elbow protection, neck protection, groin protection, and even leg protection. And we're using blunt swords, we're not using, using sharp swords, and so we're, we're protected. And what that means is, whether it's in a tournament scenario or, or just in a free play scenario, when I attack someone, I'm going all in because if I get hit, it's okay. And th that's problematic because it then doesn't ingrain the concept in, in our mind that if we actually make a mistake, if this was real life, and I'm up against a real opponent, and we're not actually wearing all this padding, and in, as much of the manuscripts show, we're not even necessarily in armor, one mistake could cost me my life. And that's going to change how I approach a fight. And this is a very, very big challenge, in my opinion, within HEMA, is that... Uh, we have a hard time remembering that. And when we try to implement our techniques and we actually do a free play scenario, people are more likely to do wild things that may be somewhat accurate to the manuscripts, but also they will get lax and they'll just take those wild shots that any probably real true medieval contemporary sword master would probably say, that's a terrible idea, never do that. But we're willing to do it because there's no danger to ourselves. And you'll see that uh, kind of again in, in tournament scenarios. Now, tournament scenarios get a little bit better because there is something on the line. You know, you're trying to win that prize and you're going to try to compete a little bit better. You're always going to try to edge the other person out and you're going to try to prevent people from hitting you because you want to win. But in terms of a recreation standpoint, we still miss that. And, and you look at any of the other groups and, you, and you'll see that Battle of Nations, they're willing to go in full charge and knock someone over. 
because they're not worried really about what if they fall over because the worst thing that happens there is they lose the fight but they don't lose their life and people wouldn't really do that when their life is on the line unless they're extremely bold or courageous or maybe even stupid um, you wouldn't really do that in that scenario you would always be equally as cautious as you are audacious in going into the fight um, and so that was really the, the discussion we ended up having was how do we begin, at least in HEMA, and, and if this might apply to other groups, how do we begin to ingrain a little bit of that fear for our lives into ourselves when we're doing something very recreational and we're doing something that isn't going to injure us, or at least that's not the expectation. Um, and that's a hard thing to do. It's something that, that I don't really know the good answer to, uh, but when I am sparring against uh, some of, of, of my colleagues, um, we always kind of have this conversation, and I do teach uh, my local HEMA class, um, but we have the conversation of before we fight, keep in mind you don't want a win-win situation. You don't want each of us to get a point. You want me to lose, and you want you to win every single time, and that should always be your goal. You should never take a shot at me or at anybody and leave yourself exposed because you wouldn't realistically do that if your life was actually on the line. And when we start talking about recreation groups, I, I think when you get to large battlefield scenarios like the European recreation groups, what they're doing kind of makes sense because they're, they're play acting. They're recreating safely, but they're recreating the scenario of that battle. And people will, will die and they'll, they'll go down and the battle will play out kind of historically accurate. Or if they're a recreation group that's going out there and trying to actually use actual tactics, They'll play some sort of game similar to what the SCA does to make people die and, and it weeds out. But nobody's really concerned about their, their health and safety uh, because they're protected and they know they're protected. So when they go out there, they're still willing to do things that might be actually questionable in a real life scenario. And we'll never actually really see that, right? Well, unless we build time machines and we go back in time and we witness these battles in person, we'll never truly know what it looked like because we aren't putting our lives on the line. And so that's, that was my, my thought process. Again, it's something of an opinion piece in terms of where I believe different recreation groups kind of fall out on kind of that range um, as, as we try to get better and closer to uh, being accurate in our recreations. Um, but ultimately, we will never get that close and, and each group has their purpose and they each have value because they are offering something different. SCA offers a lot of good recreation uh, opportunities. Not, not in my opinion, not combat, but in a lot of other regards they do. Uh, the Battle of Nations begins to show just how brutal fighters could be, but it also shows how mobile you could be in armor. Uh, the EMP group, um, they, and it's, and I just remembered, it, it's, it's uh, Empire for Medieval Pursuits, uh, and they, are, are trying to kind of blend a lot of these things together to kind of be a little bit more holistic. Uh, and HEMA says, okay, we're going to ignore all the kind of historically accurate things. We're only going to really focus on the text and understand the recreation of the martial art. And we'll put on armor to test certain things. But for the most part, we're going to use modern gear and we're going to treat it like a modern martial art just in terms of recreating the actual skill set. And then again, you have finally the, the European recreation groups, which would be kind of the counterpart to uh, the SCA that the United States has, except they, they, it's really their true history, and they, and they really work a lot harder to kind of build that as a historically accurate thing. Uh, but ultimately, we are all still, as groups, so far away from actually being able to properly recreate uh, medieval combat and, and the martial heritage that existed back then because it's still so foreign to us, even within all these groups. So that was my thought process on it. I, I'm curious what everybody thinks about it. And like I said, probably won't do a lot of these videos normally. Um, I am filling a little bit of time here because I'm, I'm working on, uh, on getting some equipment replacement uh, to do more reviews. And I've got a lot of things I'm working on. So I want to make sure to go, go and get some videos out there. Um, but certainly, let me know what you think about this concept. Uh, and let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this that are just kind of talking through uh, some of the 
kind of standard thought processes we go through uh, within our respective hobbies. Until next time, have a wonderful day.